The good news is that, having completed his £1.3 billion takeover of Manchester United, Sir Jim Ratcliffe intends to invest £245 million on improvements to Old Trafford. The bad news is that amount is well short of what is required to turn Manchester United's dilapidated stadium back into an elite location. The well-known issues at Old Trafford, including the leaky roof, claustrophobic concourses, insufficient legroom, crumbling concrete, flaking paintwork, and lack of ability to increase capacity, have come to represent the Glazers' disregard for the previous 18 years. Once unquestionably the greatest club ground in England, the so-called Theatre of Dreams, has been allowed to deteriorate as a growing number of Premier League opponents have access to state-of-the-art facilities. A mocking song about their neighbour's predicament, Old Trafford is Falling Down, has been launched by Manchester City supporters. This week, a humorous checker trade advertisement at Old Trafford made light of the disrepair of the facility. When choosing venues for Euro 2028, the organisers of the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland turned to City's Etihad Stadium rather than Old Trafford. Despite his apparent good intentions, billionaire Ratcliffe of Petrochemicals will need to do much more to improve Old Trafford. His £245 million will not touch the sides, an industry insider said, considering the vast amount of work needed. It might mean a coat of white paint for the cantilever roof, which is vulnerable to Manchester's notoriously bad weather and the sealing of the gaps where rain frequently seeps onto ticket-paying supporters. But adding an additional tier to the Sir Bobby Charlton stand and renovating everything else won't be viable at Old Trafford beyond its current 74,310 capacity without an equal or larger expenditure from the Glazers. In recent years, United has spent tens of millions upgrading the stadium, including installing safe standing barriers, smartening executive quarters and renovating the disability area. Maintaining one of the most historic stadiums in the world is a never-ending process that we are committed to continuing, the statement reads. United's problem, though, is that they've been painfully left behind. Previously, they innovated both on and off the field, constantly extending Old Trafford to stay ahead of their rivals while winning championships with metronomic regularity. Top-notch amenities are provided at both Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and Arsenal's Emirates Stadium, which appear to recognise that modern supporters attend games for more than simply 90 minutes. Many are looking for an experience and intend to spend many hours inside the stadium, possibly taking in live entertainment or food and drink catering services in addition to superb food and drink alternatives. Real Madrid and Barcelona are not content to sit still in Europe while they pour hundreds of millions of euros into extensive upgrades of the Bernabeu and New Camp. And that's without even talking about the incredible venues in the US, such the indoor Allegiant Stadium of the Las Vegas Raiders, where United played Borussia Dortmund in the pre-season. In April 2022, the Glazers hired populous architects to investigate the possibility of redeveloping Old Trafford, and the architects presented them with multiple possibilities. These included rebuilding the area surrounding a new main stand, constructing a brand new stadium next door, and extending the Bobby Charlton stand, by far the smallest of the four, over the major Manchester-Liverpool railway line behind it in order to increase capacity. At 100,000 seats, some plans took the stadium past Wembley's 90,000 seats to become the largest in the United Kingdom. One even fancied a new roof for Old Trafford. Given that United was informed that the more costly improvements would require more than £1 billion to finish correctly, it is clear that Ratcliffe's financial infusion won't go very far. Fans have legitimate concerns about how the team would pay for an extensive makeover, given the debt the Glazers have burdened it with. The railway line behind the south, Charlton Stand, and the semi-detached properties of Railway Road, which a new stand would dwarf, have traditionally been the main obstacles to development. 
However, if a concrete decking was erected over the railroad tracks and the stand was constructed on top, the project would now be possible thanks to advancements in engineering. But the price of concrete and other building supplies is going up. Any expansion of the stadium's capacity would need planners to reconsider how to swiftly and safely admit and evacuate 90,000 or more spectators. There aren't many options for public transportation, and the Metrolink tram lines at the old Trafford and Wharfside terminals are getting longer. Services at the Manchester Piccadilly to Liverpool Lime Street Line's train halt behind the South Stand were suspended in late 2017, ostensibly due to health and safety issues. While a new sparkling stand would be fantastic, it wouldn't address the issue of space constraints in other areas of Old Trafford. For those who are taller than six feet, the majority of the seats surrounding the stadium only offer 66.6 centimetres 22.2 inches of legroom, making it difficult to observe the game. Fans would get up to 80 centimetres, 31.5 inches, of legroom in most new stadiums. Even the hospitality rooms and concourses aren't the largest. In fact, some fans who purchased hospitality packages end up in a marquee set up in the parking lot before and after the game. The Glazers' announcement of their strategic review in November may have been influenced by the eye-watering price of rebuilding Old Trafford last year. They will understand all too well how their ability to make money on match days is ultimately hampered by the lack of investment in Old Trafford's infrastructure. However, in the past, it didn't appear to motivate them to make significant advancements. A year later, Ratcliffe's restricted 25% interest and an instant financial infusion while keeping control were accepted over Sheikh Jassim of Qatar's billions. Ratcliffe might view his £245 million investment as just the beginning of a slow takeover of the Glazers. If nothing else, getting the supporters on board involves shaking up the football operation and proposing to replace the leaky roof. However, Old Trafford has not seen significant investment in years, so even that enormous quantity of money is unlikely to result in anything more than surface-level improvements.